And it's now time to, to move to the subject of this meeting, and I'm happy to introduce uh, Finn Bollum Christensen. As I said, he's the coordinator of the European Network on Health Technology Assessment, and he will uh, explain the European cooperation uh, between the cooperation between uh, HTA bodies in Europe, lessons learned and perspectives. Thank you, Phil. Thank you very much for squeezing uh, time into the schedule for, for UNETSA presentation today. Um, I think it was very well chosen to have uh, Professor Fischer's uh, uh, lecture. I think it's important uh, constantly for us working in HTA to be reminded about uh, the role we have to work between uh, science and policy. And the link up to science and understanding what is going on in science is absolutely crucial for the people doing HTA. Uh, also in their role to explain to the policy, to the politicians, to the decision makers, the importance of evidence and uh, the value of evidence. This one is uh, a, a slide well known to many of you. It's actually a slide that has been developed over time. Interestingly, this slide has been growing in terms of the content of the slide as the years have moved for, for UNETA. When we had the, the first meeting uh, by the end of the project that ran from six uh, to, to nine, we deliberately decided that this uh, meeting should be in the Pasteur Institute in Paris because we wanted to send again this signal that we are close to science and we understand the uh, importance of the scientific developments uh, for healthcare and for our role. We now have a HTA network, which is a policy strategic network between the member states, and we have UNETA, which is the scientific and technical cooperation. And uh, it's important, I thought there would be some graphic coming up here. Is there somebody who could move the slides forward? by hand. Do you see synergy there? Yes. Okay, so th the synergy thing is, uh, when I saw these slides last time, they were in the uh, template of UNETA. Now they are imported into the uh, template of this conference, so there might actually be some presentation problems. But the, 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 the thing about uh, uh, synergy between the policy the politician informing level, the decision informing level, uh, and, uh, and, and, and the, the scientific and technical level needs to be uh, so, and we see that emerging, that there are clear uh, strategic directions set from the policy level where the HTA development shall go in order to serve the needs of the decision makers. And then there is the need for this strong scientific uh, technical level. When I say strong, it means that it needs to be well founded in, uh, in, in science and methodology. So th that's where the strength comes. I think it comes also in our national experience that the institutions that really are strong on transparency and clarity of how they do their HTA work, these institutions are strong. and. Uh, and um, can manifest their role in an environment of many, many different kinds of stakeholders and influences, only based on uh, scientific uh, sense, uh, sense and, uh, and practical application. Uh, we have uh, all the big and small institutions in Europe participating in UNETA, um, here you see the EU participants. Um, uh, eventually the next slide will come up. Um, and I will not go in detail about this. Uh, this is just an overview, just to show that we actually have and are now much, much more actively uh, participating uh, important uh, beacon in institutions in Europe and in the world. So uh, what is it that we want in, two, in 2019? We want to have a, a network system that, that works. 
and uh, it, it needs to be able to produce things together and it also needs to uh, link up so that uh, national production can be uh, transparently used uh, by others. Uh, it's not just a process of doing everything joint in, at the pr production stage, it's also facilitating a better possibility of sharing uh, parts of uh, HTA reportings, uh, like for example systematic reviews, etc. And then of course there need to be a lean support uh, structure uh, that can uh, make such cooperation uh, happen. Um, when we are discussing the role of HTA, we, we talk about informing policy. And if you talk to clinicians about informing policy and says that we are also there to inform clinical policy, they'll say, what, the, what is a, a clinical policy? I mean, policy is not a work that comes out of, the, say, the medical profession, but increasingly the medical profession, like the other professions, understand that they work in systems where uh, there are uh, guidelines, there are treatment programs, there are decisions made that actually have system aspects. And that's why also we should have uh, remind ourselves that the professions should be on board and we should see the links between HTA and the work, for example, on clinical guidelines. This, I think, is a, a thing to think about for the next uh, time, the next uh, years for, for uh, UNETA. Uh, we have also made a, a sort of a European version of a global uh, sort of short citation about globalized evidence and localized decision, uh, something that, for example, was behind the development of the Cochrane collaboration. But now we are working more on knowing that we, we can locate the decision, and that will be at the member state level somewhere, but in the network we can actually locate where these decisions are made. Then we can still do this work of, of sharing uh, uh, evidence uh, and approaches, and then again, we can localize the reporting. So the reporting will still be uh, mainly at the national level, or maybe even regional or hospital level. So that's the UNETA version of this uh, general concept. This uh, HTA core model shown here is actually a contribution of UNETA. It's, uh, it's, it's not that it's an innovation in the sense that it's not uh, uh, reflecting anything else than the common sense and understanding around what HTA is developed in the 1900s. Um, it gives these possibilities of uh, assessing value in a, in a, in a um, modular way. And it has uh, rapid rear, as you know. It also has broader comprehensive HTAs that take in very, very increasing important uh, issues like uh, organizational aspects and patient and, and social aspects and economic aspects. So this is actually something that we should really make sure that UNETA is also sharing and making uh, available and useful for uh, people, not only inside of UNETA doing things, but basically all stakeholders. Uh, we work uh, all along the timeline of an innovation, and uh, the graphic here that will, uh, 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 that will come, uh, I think, sometime. Um, we are going back now. Uh, the graphic that, that was supposed to come here, that it would be the HTA core model that would be dropping three times into this graphic to show that, well, we have used it for the assessment, but actually the model is just as relevant when you are structuring early scientific advice, when the companies are structuring their uh, production of evidence. And equally, of course, it's useful when you do uh, thoughts about how to do additional uh, data collection if you want to know more about the real life application. So that went well. And so let's go on to the next slide. Uh, the pop database is there for people to see what's going on elsewhere and find the colleagues to work with. Uh, next. We have uh, a number of outputs from Joint Action 2, uh, and more or less we have learned 
uh, how we can move ahead at, into a, a production. Next. So some of the challenges that we have in, uh, in advancing HTA is this uh, need to standardize so that we can share more easily information. It's not alien to us because we are close to science and we should be. I mean, listen to such a presentation we just heard from Professor Fischer. It's all about following this track of reductionist approach and then standardizing so that other people can understand the research results and see how they're uh, implemented. So standardization is fine, but it's not the, the word we use when we talk about the processes around the HTA. That's where we talk about harmonization. Next. So we, we know now that it's possible to work across borders. Uh, we, need a, we have a platform to build on, together with others, actually. For example, scientific uh, societies, um, academia, etc. Um, we need to be clear on objective for each activity. There is a joint action three now, it has a budget. I mean, looking at the budgets in the uh, Horizon 2020 projects, this is a small project, but it's the biggest in the health program ever. This one that we're currently doing, and the next one is, is, uh, is also uh, one of the biggest, uh, a four-year uh, project. So we need to think about where is value created. We don't need to carry on things that have not really shown to be useful. That's another, uh, uh, what shall I say, uh, experience. Next. Um, Actually, uh, Professor Fischer uh, gave us a reminder at the very end. He said, I don't know your field, but be aware things are changing very rapidly. And that's exactly also what, is what we tried to explain in this slide. The dynamics of decision-making are changing. And uh, what was called targeted medicine is not to be seen as something that is disturbing us in our usual ways of, of doing HTA, but it should be seen as opportunities for further development of methodology. The broad scope, again, you see the HTA core model there. It's a key thing that will be more important as we move ahead. There will still be a need to do these rapid assessments, but there will also be increasing need of these broader uh, assessments that are looking at patient and social aspects and organizational aspects, the use of human resources in healthcare, etc. Next. Um, I think I'll skip this one and, and, and let's go a few more uh, because uh, we need to be clear here, all of us, when the minister arrives just before uh, the, the, the lunch break. So just go on. So I would like to say by, by, by end that, uh, which is sort of a little bit of a personal remark, that um, one time uh, we heard yesterday several times people were referring to Mark Twain, uh, and uh, he has a lot of, there are a lot of quotations from Mark Twain. And that's this one, when he was, uh, this was in the 1800s, he was actually doing a, a tour in Europe, uh, giving speeches, etc. And then there were news in the uh, US that, uh, that he was dead. And so he sent a, a piece of news to, uh, on a cable to, to U.S. saying that the news about my death are uh, 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 highly exaggerated. And so uh, now in this situation, uh, with the, the, the coordination having been uh, led from Copenhagen for 10 years, and I've been involved in that with a wonderful team and a fantastic group, of, of partners, uh, I think I could say that uh, the news about my uh, sort of leaving my professional career are strongly exaggerated. I will be around in HTA and in international HTA in the coming years. 